Yes, we are talking about jealousy. And uh, we've been talking about this for, oof, I don't know, a couple of weeks. So we've been trying to put something together for this. And uh, yeah. I think we got something pretty good tonight. So uh, anybody who's been in a jealous relationship or has experienced jealousy for themselves, maybe you are jealous of a partner or you're jealous of your neighbor or something like that, you know, speak up, give us uh, plenty of comments. We'd love to see exactly what you're saying and everything. So uh, we're ready to roll. Be great. Um, one of the things Tim and I have been talking about is jealousy in romantic relationships, how they affect uh, relationships and how sometimes um, jealousy can move from just, you know, um, I guess if you want to say normal jealousy, right? A little bit of a, I'm a little nervous about you maybe being around that person at work to full fledged abuse, physical, emotional abuse. And, and as far as neglect goes also, um, you know, like uh, being very, very cold in a relationship because you're very, very jealous and, and how that really, um, how that hurts people. I mean, your jealousy isn't something that you just have to yourself. It's, it's an infection. <laughs> Wouldn't you say um, it, it infects the children yeah. It infects, you know, your partner, um, your friendships with other couples, well, it's, it's one of those things that, you know, it changes brain chemistry, you mm -hmm. know, when you, when you, uh, you know, when you bring up these negative feelings like that, it's going to negatively affect your whole body, your brain, your body, everything. I mean, you know, this is, these are things that lead to ulcers and strokes and things like that because people are mm -hmm. so stressed. And a lot of times they're stressed about things that they don't need to be stressed about. You know, they're, they're stressed about right. things that they're worried that haven't even happened. So right. it's, you know, it's, it's a situation where they put themselves in a negative uh, feeling, sometimes for no reason. Have you ever been to a movie where um, you're so into the movie? Remember the first time you saw Jaws? That's a good example. Oh, yeah. Right? And yep. it's amazing. The, the brain actually, uh, mind actually works like a hologram. You know, it, it actually projects mm -hmm. an image in the mind of something that's happening. And and the funny thing about the brain is that it doesn't know the difference between what is real on the outside of you and what is actually happening on the inside of you. So let's say, I don't know if anybody out there feels this way, but they've had arguments with people that they weren't even having an argument with, right, in the head. So you're driving along, going mm -hmm. to work, and you're having this argument with your spouse, a, a jealous argument and your brain actually thinks that that argument is taking place right then and there and so the body actually responds so if you were watching jaws or uh the ones that i won't watch i won't watch saw <laughs> at all yeah um, right. yeah the, i mean it, the the body actually believes that it's in the movie right because you're projecting this image right. in it. and so what kind of images are you um, daily projecting onto the body that the body believes that is real. Um, if you watch Fast and Furious, uh, the adrenal glands go crazy. Um, your fight and flight goes nuts. And, and that is a basis for jealousy also. It's, it's a fight or flight chemical of adrenal and, um, you know, uh, cortisol and testosterone. And so how much onslaught can you put the body under daily? I mean, it's hard enough being human, don't you think, Tim? without adding to mind uh, things that aren't even happening. Sure. There's, there's, uh, you know, everyday life things like, you know, commuting and, you know, people have kids, aging parents who uh, want their attention and, and help. And, uh, you know, and then on top of it, if you're, you know, uh, almost paranoid thinking that your spouse or your significant other is out, you know, creeping on somebody else, then, you know, that's going to really put, it might put you over the edge, you know, at that point. So, uh, yeah, it's, 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 you want to try to reduce some of these things you have control over, you know, How you do don't want to do that. How do you uh, do that? She's online at night. Well, I think, you go to bed, all, she I think, go to bed I think she's online. <laughs> okay. Well then, then do you, do you trust that person or no? I don't know. She's online, right? Let's say you have a girlfriend, okay. she's online. She won't yep. come to bed at the same time that you go to bed. This is a common theme among couples. One's a night owl, sure. one's a morning person. Yep. One goes to bed early yep. and begs the other one, please come to bed with me. And they're like, I don't, or they're underneath the covers with their phone because they're addicted to their phone. Right. 
Does anybody out there have that right. situation where you've been with somebody who's who's um, more into whatever they're doing than into you? They might not even be having an affair. They're just on their phone, right? And there's this jealousy. Right, that you're right. not paying enough attention to me. Yes. Well, yeah. There. Well, yeah. There, there's those kinds of relationships. That's not, that's not something I, I participate in. If, uh, you know, I got to sit there and tell them how wonderful they are every 15 minutes. Um, you know, I look at it as, you know, I want to trust that person until they give me a reason not to trust them. Until I see some obvious signs of, um, you know, oh, hey, uh, yeah, you didn't come home till three o'clock in the morning. Then I'm like, all right, what's up? You know? What are subtle but, you know, signs? I'm, I'm not that, but I'm not, the, I'm not the kind of person that's going to be like all over them. and Because so, I figured this way. I choose to be with that person and that person chooses to be with me. If they don't want to be with me, then go, I don't go move, fly away. I don't care. You know, it's like, I'd love to have somebody that is going to be there and everything. But if you're not fully invested, then I don't want that. I don't, I don't want a, a half, a, half of a relationship. You know, we were talking about this earlier off camera about how couples go into relationships without any kind of communication about what's expected you know, or what the right. needs are, or even how to handle finances. Or uh, yep. I think a couple of weeks ago, we talked about what if, let's say I had a boyfriend and he wanted to go to dinner with his ex. How would I feel about that if I wasn't invited? Would I be okay with that? Right. Would I be cool with that? Would would uh, my ego, you know, would I be able to put my ego aside and say, hey, if you want to go out to dinner, that's fine. I trust you. People have different ideas, though, about jealousy. Some people think jealousy is love. You know, well, if he's possessive or if he's jealous because I spoke to somebody, then, you know, that's that's love. Yeah, and then we, we kind of talked about that is that, you know, there, there are some people out there that, you know, they want the drama. They need the drama in their lives to feel alive and everything. So right. it's one of these things where, you know, you are either contributing to the negativity or you are trying to resolve the negativity. There's two ways to really handle it, you know, and, and if you're, if, or if you're just not acknowledging it, well, then you're accepting it then, you know? So well, it's really something that if you're, if you have a problem, then, then you got to bring it up. You, you have to bring, bring it up. up. And then, you know what? Uh, I'm just wondering if everything's okay with us. You know, uh, you've been kind of distant lately. You've been uh, quiet. You know, you don't go to bed with me anymore at the same time. You've been staying up late. Is there something? Are you mad at me? What's going on? You know, real simple. Non-threatening. It's not, you know, oh, I think you're cheating on me. You're, you're, you know, with this person and that person. And you talked to that guy on Facebook and you friended your ex and blah, blah, blah. You know, so there's a couple different ways to handle it. You know, and that one of them is to not be accusatory in it. But to also kind of say, hey, look, I, I, I'm a concerned here. You know, I, I don't see, like, I don't feel like we're really as close as we used to be. I think you have to have great communication to even bring that up. I think a lot of people do, they go by the default method. And that is, if things are really good between us, I don't want to bring it up. Because things are really good between us right now. But when I'm angry right. about it and we're having an argument, I don't want to bring it up because I don't want this relationship to end. And so it's this constant stasis of, I have jealousy feelings about what you're doing. I have old experiences about past relationships that I've had that are contributing to present experience, right? May have nothing to do right. with you, but because of my past experiences of, of untrustworthy relationships, you know, it's probably very unlikely I'm going to meet somebody who is probably not going to... Uh, I think people create a pattern of people that they're comfortable with, right? So let's say, right. um, and these messages come from childhood. So let's say you had parents who were not trustworthy, right? Or broke their promises or, or unpredictable. And you actually look for unpredictable people as you get older because it's comfortable. We have, we have some comments here. Let me, let me, let me bring up some comments here. So, Oh, good. Um, I can't see those. Liz Lizette says, yeah, right. You can't see him on yeah. your side. So Lizette says, how about when someone acts jealous as a way to isolate the other one? And that's something we're going to talk oh. about a little bit later. But yes, that's good. where that, that jealousy is used to guilt that person into, you know, 
stepping away from family and friends. We kind of talked about that in our first episode where we talked about people that get in a relationship and all of a sudden <laughs> you don't hear from them for six months or a year. Right. All of a sudden now they're around again. And it's like, oh, because they broke up. So yeah, that's that can be something that's used by one of the partners to use jealousy to isolate that person from their normal friends and family. Uh, Mike has a comment. Isn't jealousy more of a relative term though? Uh, everyone will be jealous. Yeah. Okay. Uh, everybody won't be jealous about the same things and the severity. Uh, you, if you, okay. If you will, uh, of the things you can be jealous about will be different per situation. So yeah, basically he's saying that it's really, it's, it's situational and it's personal. Okay. So Give me an example of what he's saying. So you could have someone that has, let's say, a bad temper, and they're jealous. Or you could have someone that, let's say, maybe shuts down with their jealousy. Maybe they right. give the person the silent treatment. Okay? Okay. Or, um, you know, maybe you just have someone that, you know what, um, I think you're cheating, so now I'm going to go out and cheat. Oh, that's a common one. <laughs> yeah. Right? Like, I don't... Lizette says projection, too. Yes. Yeah. So, you know what? I think you're cheating on me. Meanwhile, I'm out cheating on you. Do you think that somebody who's angry with their jealousy versus somebody who's just needy with their jealousy, don't you think that the damage is done to the relationship regardless of the method? Well, yeah, sure. I mean, there's... It's always going to be, uh, you know, a negative to the relationship that if you're... If you're unnecessary, I mean, the way I look at it is jealousy is unnecessarily, uh, you know, having a negative impact on that relationship. I mean, that's that's the whole essence of it. Right. There's, no, I mean, is there a good is there a good jealousy? Anybody? Yeah. Anybody think there's a good jealousy? I don't know. You know, Carol asked. Uh, Kim, think, there's. Think there's. There's a, a different Kim out there. Jealousy. Oh yes, there is. She says, I think the relationships between exes are fine when things remain transparent. When it becomes hidden or secret, then you have a cause for concern. Nice. That's true. Well, okay. So, so then, Kim, uh, are you saying that you can be friends on Facebook, you can uh, comment on that person's page, but you can't direct message? Is that is that the... Uh, is that the uh, kind of barrier we're talking about? The the um, the the kind of uh, you know, I guess um, I'm trying to think of the word. But anyway, uh, is that the kind of situation that you're talking about? Well, I think um, if you can respond to some point, you know, I want to I want to go back because you know, um, you know, jealousy goes back thousands of years. I mean. Mm -hmm. You know, the first time we probably heard about jealousy was, you know, when you're either, you know, in Catholic school like me or in catechism class. Right. And you heard about Cain and Abel, you know, and one was jealous of the other and he killed the other one. So, you know, Cain killed Abel because he was jealous. And so it's been a theme for centuries, you know, right. in this world. And, um, you know, we, we talked a little bit uh, last week about you know, I look at the 80s as like, you know, people call it the me decade or the selfish decade or the greed decade. <clears throat> and for me, I thought it was really the jealous decade because it was all about what people were wearing, what cars they were driving, uh, what, how much money they had. It was a whole decade based on jealousy. Everybody was jealous what the other person had and then had to go and get the same car or a better car or, mm -hmm. you know, had to had to go get nicer jeans or nicer shirts or whatever. Yeah, a pair of jeans in 1980 was, was like $55. We were talking about this earlier. And I wouldn't even pay $55 for a pair of jeans today. But, boy, it was so yeah, important exactly. to have the right clothes. If you didn't have the right clothes, and I mean, this comes down to jealousy too. I mean, in high school, there's a lot of jealousy. Um, you were out. You, you weren't even part of th that world unless you had the right things. It's a terrible message. You know, Izod shirts and Gloria Vanderbilt jeans and Levi's and, and, and all that. I think our culture really concentrated at that point uh, about, okay. about so that thing, you know, Christy, 
Crispy responded again. She goes, jealousy can be good for you. If you actually look at what makes you jealous, you may appreciate the little things you have. Okay. That's one way to look at it. It is one way to look okay. at that. Uh, Kim responded, if my husband is aware of the connection, and if there's no restrictions or hidden agendas, then yes, I feel that's okay. If I am friends with an ex, I believe my husband would be friends or friendly with an ex, and vice versa. Uh, once that becomes hidden or secret, that's cause for concern. I think it's unrealistic to think that your partner is not going to have connections with other people in the past. I, I think it's unfair to say, well, now that you're with me, right? Going back to the isolating thing, could this be an isolating thing? Now that you're with me, you must cut off all connections and all feelings that you had for anybody prior to me. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know if that's healthy because just, I mean, it, I'm not saying that the, that the person should act on those connections, <laughs> But it's natural to have old feelings for people. Maybe not, not the same kind of feelings that you have for your partner. But, you know, uh, people have said before, well, I still love that person in my heart, but we're no longer together, right? But the relationships today, they're very, very constricting about that, very, um, very possessive about even my own feelings, about being able to own my own feelings. What do you think of that, Tim? Mm. Do you think that you have the right to own those feelings and but yet respect your partner? I mean, do you have to do away with those feelings to love your partner? Well, I think it also, it also kind of, uh, <clears throat> it can also come down to uh, your lifestyle as well. So for example, uh, you live in a small town, right? If you, if you live there your whole life and you've dated several different people over the years. Sure. It's going to be really hard for you to avoid those people. That's the musical chair theory of Bradford PA. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> like, you know, yeah, it's kind yeah. of like, uh, what's his name? Kevin Bacon, you know, the, <laughs> the seventh one. What? And footloose? No, yeah, remember like the seven degrees of Kevin Bacon or something like that. Like you could oh, connect yeah, yeah, Kevin. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the way it is living in a small town. Right. You can connect everybody to everybody. You know? Right, right. Yeah. So, yeah. So, you know, if if you're if you're living in a small town like that, mm -hmm. you can't avoid running into your exes. There's no way. Right. Yeah. Sooner or later, you're gonna you're gonna see them at the store, at a baseball game, at whatever. I mean, you just you know you're gonna run into them. Right. If you're living in a large metropolitan area, it's a little bit different. You can kind of be um, a little bit more anonymous. But, you know, I guess the question is, is that person seeking out their exes or is it just kind of, you know what? Uh, So-and-so, I commented on so-and-so's thing and all of a sudden I saw his name pop up also commenting. Well, you know, you know it all comes back to are you addicted to drama? Do you love drama? Is it like a right. drug for, I, I think it's definitely a drug for some people. Um, what are some of the other comments? Mike's saying, can jealousy be a form of fuel in some environments? Take, for example, I want a promotion at work because of myself being better qualified, wanting to earn more, benefits of the position, and all of the above. That jealousy may fuel me to be more productive and work harder to earn it in the future. Okay, I don't know if I I really qualify that as being jealous. I I don't I don't know if it's. Um, you think it's more driven? I think maybe. Well, I think yeah, I think it's more of you know just you have a you have a. You're motivated, but I think maybe like with jealousy, if you said, you know what, that guy's not as smart as me. I could do a better job than him. You know what I mean? You know what you what Mike said sounded more like I want that position and not I'm jealous of that guy because he doesn't know what he's doing. I'm better, so you know that's the thing. I want to I want I should have that because I'm better than that guy. When I was in real estate, my goal was uh, to compete against myself. So I guess right. I used I used my drive at that time to do better than I did yesterday. Or every year, you know, I set goals to do even better. And so I didn't really, I kind of kept blinders on. I didn't really want to look at what other people were doing. I didn't talk about how much money I made mm -hmm. because I knew it could right. incur jealousy, you know, if I said, hey, guess what I just, you know, guess what the commission I just made. So I was always very careful mm -hmm. not to incite jealousy because I, I felt like it was a destructive emotion. 
and that I was always competing or being jealous for myself. Does that make sense? Like, not yeah. quite jealous, but uh, competitive against my myself. It worked better, I think. It worked better. So Kim, Kim came back. She says, I believe it comes down to respect. If two people partner and they're in a committed monogamous relationship, there's a basic understanding that if you cross a boundary that there will be an issue. Mm -hmm. uh, considering that it's a boundary you both set. So Kim's, Kim's kind of trumpeting what we said earlier about communication is number one. You have to sit down and say what is acceptable, what isn't acceptable. And then that way you're both, you should both be on the same page. Right. You know, and that's, that's where, that's where we get into trouble is where people don't set any kind of boundaries and then, or they're not clear boundaries. And sometimes one, pro well, you didn't say that, you know, mm -hmm. and so oh, now, yeah. then it becomes a now, little, 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 right, right. Then it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> why didn't you bring that up? If you weren't sure, why didn't you bring that up? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So yeah, that's, you know, and people can kind of manipulate it in that way as well. Well, that's really um, relative. Yeah. So yeah. And, and, Let's, I, I'd like to get into maybe some of the even more negative stuff. Like we were talking about okay. uh, possibly, you know, if you're talking about like long-term uh, jealousy and long-term abuse, you're talking about, um, you know, living, living a negative lifestyle and also, you know, like you were saying about affecting the kids. Um, what are, yeah. What are you teaching your children actually, when you're constantly fighting over yeah jealousy yeah right right you know why and the other question is why would you want to be with someone if you can't trust them i mean well, it doesn't I mean, make it any sense what i said before is that you feel comfortable with that person that's exactly the template you grew up with right to go out of your comfort right. zone sometimes i think the most boring people or people that we would never consider as a partner are probably the best partners for us i mean i'm going to go out and right. say that but most of us won't won't explore that. You know, you'll be on a date right. with someone and, and you'd rather watch paint dry, right? But they're a really sure. nice person, right? They're, and you know, mm -hmm. you know somewhere in the back of your mind, they're never going to abuse me. They're never going to probably, um, you know, be jealous all the time. And all these characteristics of these prior relationships that I've, ha I've hated having, but actually love having. Does that make sense? So um, loving that. Yep again so you know you sit across from them and and they're you go home and you're like god that was awful but probably was the best yeah. possible date you could have ever been on if you gave it right. some time to get used to and to get comfortable with that template instead of the previous crazy jealous you know obsessive sure. kind of relationships i think women in particular I'm not saying men aren't guilty of this, but we go back to the same kind of relationships again and again. And that's why a lot of women um, remain single because the fear of whoever I pick is just going to be a bad pick. Right. So my picker's off, right. basically. So Kim, Kim follows up and says, I agree. If you're conditioned to feel love only by control, you'll find it hard moving into healthy relationships. Absolutely. That's, that's totally, you're, you're training your brain for that. You're, you're Has anybody your out there done that? Like moved into a very healthy relationship after being in a string of unhealthy relationships? Anyone? Anybody writing? I'd actually like to. I'd, I'd actually like to relate a story that uh, uh, someone I know told me recently, um, and kind of go through that. Um, so back when she was uh, in her twenties, this is a long time ago, but back when she was in her twenties. Uh, she was dating a guy that was uh, about seven years older than her. Mm -hmm. And he was very insecure. Uh, no matter what she said, he was suspicious of what she did. You know, if, uh, if she gave a, an example of one day the, the thermostat uh, was not working properly in the house and he was at work and then uh, she somehow figured out how to fix it. Yeah. And uh, when he came home from work, he said, oh, you must have you must have got some guy over here, had sex with him so that he would fix it. Hmm. Um, and he would put her down whenever she did something good. You know, he, he only saw her as a sexual partner. Uh, that's the only that's the only good thing she could do. 
Um, any if anyone was nice to her, it's because she must be having sex with him. Wow. Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, he he got them the walkie. Remember, this is years ago. So remember the walkie-talkie phones. Yeah. So he got he got them the walkie-talkie phones, and when she was out doing something, he would check up on her so often during the day. Wow. And he would make her, you know, take like a picture of where she was oh my God. so that she could prove that she was where she said she was. Yeah, That's so it was, horrible. That's like being under surveillance. Yeah, really. Like you're married yes. to the FBI. Why did she, did she ever yeah, see why yeah. she was okay? Well, maybe not okay with this, but why she, she went along with I it. Think, yeah, I think at the time she was just young and uh they had been together for a while and i think she just kind of felt like okay this is you know he loves me he really he wants really bad to be with me and and sometimes sometimes when we're young we we mistake you know passion that jealousy for a real passion and that's not really what it is right, right. um at, at one point it ended up it started getting physical and mm -hmm. some other she it's, it's it's kind of ironic because she was working with law enforcement at the time and Wow. Some of the people got involved and she realized she was like, you know what? I, I got to get out of this. This isn't, this isn't going to be good for me. This is not going to be right. good for my daughter and it's not right. going to work. So I got, I got to get away. And so uh, that's how she ended up finally getting out of the relationship. And, you know, even when, you know, even when she was like, okay, I'm done. He held on to some of her things. So she actually had to go to court to try to get some of her things back. And she calling him and saying, can I get my stuff back? And he claimed in court that she was stalking him. Oh my God. Because she kept calling him. She's like, wow. I'm calling you to get my stuff. I, I want to be with you. Give me, give me yeah. my stuff back so I can yeah. move on. And he used that to say that she was stalking him. That's how crazy some of these people are with this jealousy and control. Well, that I they, think if you're manipulating in a, all levels. Yeah. I think if you're in a relationship with someone who's that, jealous it's only common sense that, that will probably move on to some kind of physical abuse i think a lot of mm -hmm. women go well i'm not being hit you know he hasn't punched me i've heard a lot of women friends you know right. say that well you know he he just gets angry sometimes or he's just jealous because he loves me and they don't understand that well whether he hits you or not he's hitting you and vice versa right. like to, i'd like to come back to at least um to understand that men are emotionally abused a lot and wind up in emotionally abusive relationships and many times physically abusive relationships. And we don't talk about that. We talk a lot about the other way around, but the number one injury for men in abusive relationships, can you guess what it is? It's head trauma. Uh, I was they, just going to say hit on the head. It is. It's a hit on the head because it comes from behind. They will, they will use right. a very blunt object and hit them on the head. And so it's, right. it's erroneous to believe that men aren't physically and emotionally abused and don't stay in those relationships simply because maybe they had an abusive mom, you know, there's their temper right. or somebody sure. that was female that was very, very right. bad to them. And, and so they keep repeating that, that kind of relationship. So we have more comments. Lori says it's just like her ex. Uh, they mentally tear you down to nothing. So you think so low of yourself. You begin to believe yeah. that you don't deserve any better. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Kim says control comes in all forms. Verbal and emotional abuse uh, is bad, if not worse. Of course. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the, the, uh, those bruises don't necessarily heal uh, no. when they're emotional and mental. Uh, let's see. Lizette says they're not really jealous. It's a guilt and control tactic. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Lori says it'll always eventually turn into abusive. So in other words, Lori's saying that, you know, the little things, uh, the little bit of jealousy here and there, eventually will turn into the physical abuse. Right. I think when she said, you know, they put you, you get down so low that you think that that's all that you deserve. And I really understand that. That brainwashing takes a long time and a lot of counseling yeah. and personal introspection to get over. There's a lot of people out there that have left their exes that were abused 10 years ago that are still struggling with the mental aspect of should I have left mm -hmm. where I was wrong right. or I was bad for leaving or I didn't love him or her enough to help them with their jealousy, which is sad because it wasn't yeah. your fault. It really wasn't. But I think that there is hope in that. But I think you really have to ask for help. 
And that's the isolating factor yeah. we're going back before with jealousy. It's, it's extremely isolating. So who do you ask? Who's going to believe you too? If, if he or she is great in public with you and your friends. I mean, I think we've all known couples that we thought were the perfect couples together only to find out later that things were an absolute horrible, horrible mess. Mm -hmm. But that person stuck in that relationship really believes that that's it. You know, nobody's going to believe me. You know, he or she's the pillar right. of the community. Everybody loves them. Who's going to believe little old me? So do we have any more yeah. comments? That's a lot. You know, that that's one of the things we see a lot in sexual abuse where, um, you know, they say, look, I'm, I'm the good guy or I'm the, I'm the, I'm the teacher, the woman. And mm -hmm. I, it's amazing to me, all the teachers now that are getting caught having sex with the students, the, the female teachers. Mm -hmm. So it's like uh, you have situations where a person in authority like that saying, look, people love me. Mm -hmm. I'm a, I'm a teacher at this school. You know, I'm, I know everybody here. I know your parents. I know all these people. They're never going to believe you. Right. So right. it's the same kind of tactic where, you know what, I'm great, everybody loves me, and no one's going to believe you because I would never do something like that. Yeah. And sometimes the abuser even convinces themselves that they haven't really done the things that they've done. Or they gaslight so like that's how, person, you know, right? You, the right. Term that's how poisonous it is. Yeah. yeah. Like you're crazy. You've you're, got the problem. I don't have the problem. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I, I've seen I've seen that happen too, where you know someone was cheating on another person, and uh, they they kept saying you're crazy, you're crazy, and the person actually went and got on medication. Wow. Because they were so paranoid. They're like, wow, maybe there is something wrong with me. Or I never. You know, said come that. to find out later. That's a good one. I never said. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, let's see. Lori says she left five years ago and was with him for 18 years, and she's still in therapy. I have horrible nightmares about the abuse. That's terrible. That's unbelievable. Uh, Lizette says if it's normal jealousy and insecurity, then if you say to the other person, the story I'm telling myself is, it gives an opportunity to resolve it. When it's continually unresolved, that's the red flag. Get out. Yeah. Yeah. So in other words, no matter in so in other words, uh, Lizette, no matter what you say, if they don't take your word for it, then yeah, there's no there's no real uh, resolution to that. There has to be right. you know two people coming to the middle to talk about this and and with respect. Um, so if we could talk a little bit about um, if you're the person who is feeling these feelings of jealousy. Mm -hmm. What can we do to try to reduce that stress? You know, I have uh, eight tips that I got from psychcentral.com. Uh, let's see here. So number one, assess your relationship. Uh, the best way to overcome jealousy is the first, take a look at your romantic relationship. Uh, is it built on trust, respect, and love? Uh, do your partner, is, is your partner's behavior reflecting their words? Are they honest with you? If they're not, naturally, this can trigger or perpetuate your insecurity. Uh, if you're in an insecure relationship, expect to have your jealousy buttons pushed, like we're saying. Uh, mm -hmm. But no one can tell you what to do. If you stay, most likely you'll feel bad and jealous sometimes. The second thing is assess yourself. If you're in a secure and solid relationship and you're still feeling jealous, look at yourself and explore your own experiences. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Uh, a person's basic attachment style underlies their tendencies towards jealous reactions. Let's talk about attachment styles. There's there's a couple yeah. of them. There is what they call the avoidant. Avoidants usually wind up with people who are needy attachment style. Um, so you have this push and pull, this tension that we've been talking about between mm -hmm. them chasing after that person and that person not being able to connect. So a lot of times you find that in relationships, the person that can't connect and the person that just wants too much connection. There's just no balance in there whatsoever. I think, um, mm. I, I don't know what to say about the avoidant because they're probably not gonna go to counseling, right? But maybe there's hope for the person who's, who's more needy, um, maybe if they can get a little uh, clarification on, on how they act. I think sometimes asking your friends how you act and getting some kind of critique for if you, if you can handle the criticism to say, do you think I act needy? Do you think I 
you know, am I overbearing? Do you think I need him too much or need her too much? Here, here are some questions. Do you have a pervasive feeling of emptiness or lack of self-worth? Self -worth? How was your relationship with your early caregivers? Was the atmosphere in your home warm and loving sometimes, but also critical? Were you raised in a repressive atmosphere? Were your early caregivers unreliable? Uh, let's see. That's a good one. Later, later experiences and circumstances can influence your style. For instance, a skilled therapist can help you build self-esteem and work through your concerns. Uh, the third part is seek out other support. Have interests outside your relationship. Talk to a friend about your jealous feelings, uh, but don't do this to the exclusion of talking to your partner. Right. That comes down. Next is recognize recognize your jealousy. When we when we name the jealousy, it loses its power because we're no longer letting it shame us. Oh. Acknowledging that you're jealous opens the door to learning. So, uh, yeah, sometimes you know we can say, "Hey, look, I am feeling a little insecure. I'm feeling jealous here. Um, wh why? What what is what is my role in this?" Mm -hmm. I like that uh, part about yeah. naming the jealousy. I think that's really, really good um, uh, to be able to name it. Once you name it, then you can, you can kind of deal with it. I think internalized feelings that are stuffed a lot of times come out in terrible behaviors, you know, of irritation with a partner or um, withdrawal, like you were saying before, and not actually naming what's happening. Do you think that jealousy, do you think that, that it's ever good? to be jealous you think it's natural to be jealous i yeah i think i think there's always going to be a few times here and there where you're jealous i mean if you care about somebody no matter what you're gonna you're gonna have a few pangs of jealousy here and there it's, right. it's just gonna happen you know um christy had another comment many people believe abuse is normal uh when you try to tell them it's not they think you're lying because their life is built on built on lies and doug says i wasn't always the best husband Occasionally jealous. It caused problems. I ultimately decided to fully trust her, and when she went out with her friends without me, even encouraged her to do so. Our only agreement was to let me know when she would be home. I gave up the control, and we grew closer because of it. That's good. She always came home happy. She always came home happy, and we were happier together because of it. Best thing I ever did. That's fantastic, Doug. Doug's That's a great writer, by the way. Yeah, that was very good. Doug is a great writer. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, Kim says, I found in my experience, my insecurities have more to do with my own self-worth. Self -worth. When you have been conditioned to feel like garbage, you don't feel like you deserve a healthy, loving relationship. Yeah. Unless there is a warranted jealousy. You tend to look at your relationships and handling them with kid gloves. When is, when is the other shoe going to drop? You sabotage anything that doesn't feel normal to you. When and only when you determine and realize your own self-worth and are secure within your own self, you won't continue those patterns. Totally. That, that's couldn't say it any better. Kim. That's a great way to say it. I think that part she said about sabotage so is really other, important. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So learn from your jealousy. We can use feelings of jealousy, jealousy as inspiration to grow. Uh, for instance, you realize that the reason you get jealous every time your friend plays your guitar, it's because that's also something you'd like to do. Kind of like we were talking about the job situation. Mm -hmm. Rather than wallowing in that jealousy, you sign up for guitar lessons. Uh, the next uh, way to deal with it is to let it go. Tell yourself that you don't need this emotion in your life and you're relinquishing it. Breathe deeply and imagine it flowing through you like the wind. Repeat as often as it takes to truly let it go. Next one is manage your emotions healthfully. Practice mindfulness to calm your runaway emotions. Uh, tune into your body to identify how you're feeling. Take several deep breaths and detach from the intensity of those emotions. Uh, let's see. Share with your partner. Let's see. Uh, so journaling. Journaling is also a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you feel that you write it down, maybe you can get out some of that emotion. Dancing to your favorite music or taking a walk. And the last one is remind yourself of your positive traits. Uh, let's see. I'm great. And let's see. Uh, he's talking about he's he's talking about people that compare each other. Mm -hmm. So, oh, she's so great at that. I'm terrible at that. You know. So you kind of you put yourself down that 
that yeah. self-talk like Kim was talking about. Uh, let's see here. Again, jealousy is a normal reaction. It becomes problematic when it becomes persistent. When you find yourself feeling jealous, recognize that what's happening and delve deeper into your relationships and yourself. So I think we really come out of that and say, you know, number one, be in tune with what you, who you are and what you're feeling. Number two, try to reduce some of that stress. And number three, communicate. I think if you use those three tactics, you're going to be pretty successful with dealing with jealousy if you're having those feelings. Well, I liked what you said about when they said, um, when you're feeling jealous, go for a walk. That sometimes maybe you're jealous yeah. that their activity um, kind of leaves you out. Why don't you try also or try something else? And that really speaks to changing body chemistry. So when I go dance to my favorite music or when I go take a walk, when I'm feeling intense feelings of jealousy, I'm actually changing the chemistry. I'm upping my serotonin. I'm, I'm lowering some of that obsessive dopamine and, and I'm making a difference in what I'm doing. So we're changing body state when, uh, you know, we're changing our state and that's pretty simple to do. And a lot right. of people don't know that. Like for me, um, if I'm depressed about something or if I'm feeling very intense about something, um, singing for me changes body state, right? It, it kind of right. uses a different part of my brain and it kind of turns down the volume on whatever I'm feeling that's very intense or negative. So I think those are great things to do. You know, if you're feeling and I think for a lot of people, they know that they feel jealous and they know that it's irrational, but like all irrational feelings, it feels very real. If you're that aware, mm -hmm. that's a great place to be. Take a walk, go listen to music, sing, play your guitar, do something other than react. And, and it's the difference of being responsive to your partner and being reactionary to your partner. Long time ago, um, when uh, I was married, uh, he loved football. So did my boys love football. And every Sunday I felt very left out. Cause I really, I'm mm. like a football atheist. I don't, really, I, right. I don't, I can't even tell you when the Super Bowl's happening. So, um, I would go and go to the movies that day and it lessened my feeling of feeling left out. Cause I finally got tired of feeling mm. bad about it and trying to enjoy something I couldn't possibly enjoy. So that was my movie day. So that's what I did. I was very satisfied with that. But you have to be kind of satisfied right. with being by yourself. I think for a lot of people, Tim, people don't want to be alone ever, like even in the house alone. Right. I mean, do you know people like that? Can't be alone. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Can't. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I remember, you know, just kind of, you know, growing up, I would see people that were, you know, uh, literally broke up with somebody a couple of days ago and now they got a new girlfriend or boyfriend. It's like, oh. they, you know, they yeah. can't be alone. Yeah. You know, it's, they, they need to have someone in their life at all times. And a lot of people use that as reaffirmation, you know, Hey, you know what? I'm, I'm, I am wise. lovable. Thank I am you. wanting reaffirmation. Oh, so it's, they're, they're affirming, they're affirming who they are and that they're lovable and capable of having, uh, you know, a, a quality relationship, so to speak. Right. Um, Jeff says, if I see another man trying to flirt with my wife, does it make me a little jealous and protective? Sure. But I realize she can't help what others do. Do I sit around and worry that men are flirting with my wife when I'm not around? Nope. I have faith in her. There's the difference. That's nice. Um, yep. So. That's really nice. That's yep. good to hear. That's a really positive thing for a guy anybody see. ever anybody else have any other comments or questions or anything we'll take as much as we can here hey nicole shrub timothy maury just some people new coming on so um you know i've been in a relationship where i was you know accused of cheating and everything else and i'm like look you know i i no, it's not, it's not me. I, I do one at a time. So it's like, you know, it's you, but there's times where you sit there and you go, you know, looking back and saying, you know, maybe that person was cheating on me. Maybe they were projecting that, you know, like we had talked a little bit about earlier. Right. And maybe that person is, um, you know, trying to beat you to the punch, so to speak, mm -hmm. you know, and, and they try to use that against you and say, well, you were cheating. Meanwhile, I was never cheating to begin with, yeah. but, 
you know, they use it as a manipulation. So, yeah, I've, I've been uh, the victim of some of the jealousy and everything. Um, have you, I, have I been jealous? Yeah. I mean, you're, you're going to be jealous at some mm-hmm. times, you know, if you, uh, especially, I think, you know, the, the most jealous I would be is if there's somebody that I like, but it hasn't yet developed. Mm-hmm. And if I see that person, maybe like flirting with somebody or whatever, and that would, that would make me jealous. It wouldn't, um, I think what the emotion that I, it comes from me would be, I'm a little bit like disappointed. I'd be like, Ugh, you know, she, mm-hmm. sometimes I look and go, Oh my God, she thinks that guy's attractive. Or she thinks he's funny or whatever. I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, <laughs> sometimes I lose respect for people when they do that stuff. I'm like, Oh my God, what's, what's the matter with you? Right. I don't want to be with you now, you know, because you thought that guy was cute. Oh, my God, what the hell's the matter with you? Like, I've looked at your choices. I don't want to be part of your choices. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't I don't want to be. I I refuse to be your next mistake. Um, So, yeah, it's it's sometimes. Yeah, I've I've actually lost respect for people sometimes when I see you. Yes. Yeah. 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 I've been there. Yeah. yeah, This. In fact, uh, this is probably going back a good probably like 10 years or so. I had just moved to Florida and I was out, uh, one night and, um, there, there were, that was back. There was this, uh, kind of a, I I don't know. It was kind of a short term fad where guys were wearing these like trucker hats and everything. And they were, this is the beginning of the beard, you know, when the beard started coming out and And there were guys, there were guys out at the bar that night. And I'm like, this guy looks like he hasn't showered in like at least two, three weeks. And these yeah. girls are like up there hugging them and everything. I'm like, uh, what? This guy's yeah. disgusting. What's the matter with you? You know? <laughs> I was just like, oh, what is, is, what is right. happening with the world? There's somebody for everybody. Yeah, so you just kind of sit there. Yeah. yeah, one minute you're jealous that, oh, this guy's getting all the attention from these girls. Then you're like, wait a minute. Those girls think he's cute? Oh, God, get away from me. <laughs> so, Do you yeah. think that those, those, the more people come complain about jealousy like they're very angry with their partner all the time oh i know you're cheating on me i know it do you think that they're doing the cheating because i have a tendency to believe that the more somebody shouts about something the more likely it is that they're doing that yeah. themselves yeah yeah absolutely. it's like it's a all projection diversion all projection. Tactic, right have you had uh, somebody, which women, which, you? which, uh, scenario? Someone's accused you of oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And asked that they were doing yeah. that themselves. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And like I said, they're trying to beat you to the punch. They're trying to say, oh, you're cheating, you're right. cheating. And then if you right. catch them cheating, they're like, oh, well, I was only cheating because you were cheating. Uh, Jeff that's, says, I think there's an underlying belief that men are in here, that men are inherently okay with cheating, even if they don't do it themselves. Or that guys have that locker room talk mentality towards women. In reality, in my experience, is nothing could be further from the truth. Few men I associate with have been known have I known to cheat on their wives, and I knew few men that are openly raunchy about women. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you know, I I'll this- tell you. Um, I can't say the same thing. I, I think I've seen a lot of guys over the years cheat on their wives, mm-hmm. you know, just it, even the little thing, like, let's say, uh, going to the massage parlor to get the happy ending. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, a lot of guys don't even consider that cheating. Right. You know, so that's, that there's, there's a lot of borderline stuff that, um, you know, guys will do that they don't consider cheating, but you know, they, Obviously, they wouldn't do something like that in front of their wife. Um, Doug's, Doug says, Jeff's right. If you drop the jealousy, your lady will appreciate you more, and you won't have a reason to be jealous anymore. I practice that now in my current relationship, and it just feels good for the both of us. It brings us closer. If you continue the jealousy, she won't be yours for long anyway. So cutting that jealousy cord makes you more attractive. You both win. Yeah, it will really burn out a relationship. The jealousy. It's just a weird. Oh, Christy. Christy, it. Christy has a, uh, she has a theory of the uh, grungy guys. Okay. So can it be if a person talks to the grungy person that their partner will be less jealous than a good looking person? Oh. Ah, that's interesting. That is interesting. 
Thank That's you interesting. For so you, yeah, you're thinking that the guy, the guy that looks like he's homeless, you don't see as a threat. I get right. that. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's possible. It's it's. I think yeah, they, that could also be very stealthy too. You know, maybe that's the guy that she uh, she is cheating with, but you know, he's trying to make it look like you know they're just friends or acquaintances or whatever. So, well, I think it's pretty primal. You know, as if, if we're looking at you know um, who's going to be stronger, who's you know who's going to be better looking, who's going to create more offspring, right. kind of thing. But we we live in modern right. bodies, but we're still pretty much driven by I don't know primal objectives of mating and yep. and making sure our seed is the strongest genetic material out there. So I think that's why they they've even done studies on the symmetry of faces. You know what people consider beautiful um, and what they don't uh, is really right back down to our need to produce great genetic material. You know stronger right. material. So. Yeah, that might be why you're not as, um, you know, somebody's not as jealous over somebody who they don't, they, they don't deem good looking, correct? Right. Yeah. Sure. Any more comments? Um, Kim says, I've been a server and bartender many years of my life. If I had a dollar for every time a married man tried to speak to me or the horrible stories I've heard them talk about how stupid their wives were, I would be rich. Wow. Uh, she says, but I also know a ton of women who cheat or have cheated. This is not gender specific. Mm -hmm. No, definitely not. Yeah. Yeah, sure. So, um, and um, yeah, I, the, I guess, well, I guess we're going to have to do uh, an episode of why men cheat and why women cheat and all that. So that'll well, be they say that there's different some point, reasons, right? There's different reasons, but mm -hmm. I don't know. Right. I think people are people. Well, this is a good talk. All right. We're going to wrap it up. It's been almost an hour and uh, we're about to uh, move on. We'll have uh, another great topic for you next week. And, uh, I don't know where it's Doug says, I've never been the good looking one in my relationships. I've learned I've had to be more mature and trust my partner. It served me well. Doug, that's two of us. I'm never the best looking one in the relationship. So, um, so yeah, next week we'll have another topic. Uh, we're going to have some good stuff. If you guys have ideas of topics, please let us know. Uh, also, also check out. Kim's uh, site, her uh, Soul Sandwich group on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And also I'm coming out with some new uh, new blog articles on uh, Midlife Crisis Traveler this week. I got some great stuff coming from Arches National Park. You're going to love it. And uh, so we'll see you guys next week. And let us know if you have questions or comments. And we'll repost this, um, this video. We edited it up a little bit, and we'll post it out there for you guys, okay? Hey, Have a great evening, and we'll see you next week. Okay, bye.